Good morning, Lighthouse. I guess that's my um, official title now. Maybe I'll just use this. Um, every time I have the privilege to, to speak and really try to, I mean, uh, study the Word of God so I can share with you, uh, with the congregation, I really see my emptiness. I see my inadequacy. And but I thank you for your prayers. And Pastor, I mean, uh, Sister Lisa, specifically praying for me that something good will happen. Um, because whenever we meet, it doesn't matter who is up here. As long as we are speaking the word of God, something good is going to happen. Amen. And we get blessed. Um, this morning, I want to talk about grace and fellowship. Uh, we've seen the beautiful testimonies. Um, I wish we could have more time. I thought maybe we should just have had testimonies today, you know. But it was, it's really beautiful. Most of those people came from this church. They came from the earth. Through the grace of God, they became members of a fellowship. They were here for many years. They got, you know, God touched their heart. They went back and they started different churches. How many churches we have now? Lighthouse churches in, um, I think, 13. I think more than that, you know. Um, but I praise God for that. And that's what I want to talk about, grace and fellowship. But before that, I want to thank you guys because without people like us, you and me coming here, there won't be a fellowship. And any of us could be somewhere today. It's a nice weather, maybe humid. But you could be playing golf. You could be doing something else. But we choose to be here, and there's a good reason why we're here. And I, don't, I pray that God can use me this time to be able to speak to you guys that when we leave here, we don't come empty. Your time is not wasted. Already we've been blessed with, this, with the messages, with the praise and worship. And thank you for, your, for starting, I mean, preaching part of my message that we don't take the grace of God for granted. And that's all, what this whole message is about. Sorry if I get uh, technically, I mean, electronically challenged because I'm starting to see uh, different things here. Um, Pastor Jennifer talked about the gifts. She talked about the gift of salvation. She talked about the gift of grace and the gift of Holy Spirit. And the gift of grace, I mean, I'm talking about grace here. Um, there's two aspects of it, if you look at it in general. One is when we get saved through faith. Ephesians 2.8 talks about if we get, uh, we get saved through faith. Uh, by the grace of God, we get saved through faith. And then there's the grace that we need to endure. We need, as brothers and sisters, together to move on. Because if we don't meet, where would some of us be? You know, one time I told, you know, somebody, I had a discussion about the, 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 uh, with a friend. And I said, maybe if I... If I were not a Christian, probably I would be a drug dealer or I would be some criminal. I would be doing something else. But through the grace of God, I am who I am today. Um, so let's start with it. Uh, this reverend, uh, J. Patrick Street, defined what grace is. He says, grace gives us a new life, which is not condemned by God. Through God's grace, we are forgiven, transforming our thinking resulting in the renewal of our mind and heart. And the second part, through grace, we live the kind of life that God would like every one of his children to experience. So we get saved through grace, but that's not sufficient. We can't just get saved and say, let's sit home, no more fellowship, nothing. I'm already saved. I can go do what, you know, whatever I want to do. But through the grace, we live to to, the, to live the kind of life that God would like every one of his children to experience. And that's a challenge for us in this world that we live now because the church is a community. But we are now faced with so many challenges in this world. You think about COVID. When it came, we stopped meeting. Uh, luckily for some of us, you know, 
uh, we were able to ha have online um, uh, services. Some, for some places, people do not have you know, internet, so how do they meet? Um, social media has changed things. You know, some people now rely on social media. You know, YouTube, well, we have a friend, maybe Stephen probably knows him, that he has a pastor he has never met, but he promotes this pastor as the best pastor, the only pastor that we should be listening to. And you have those sort of views, and some of them are very, very vocal about their, uh, about their beliefs, you know. And some of us are maybe timid, even though we have our faith. But some of those who really believe those controversies, they're very, very bold at times, you know. And there's so much access, I mean, there's access now online on materials, easier to get, and so which can easily lead, mislead people. And that's why meeting, like, what we do consistently, constantly, every Sunday we try to come to church is so important. So, um, you will forgive me if I get, uh, don't worry, I have my notes all over, you know. Um, so, Slide three. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 14, 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This grace that is saying we find grace, this is not a salvation grace. This is grace that we have been saved. We need to find grace so that it can help us in our time of need. When we go through those challenges, somebody having cancer, your child is sick, you're struggling financial, your job situation, we need grace. We need the grace of God to be able to overcome those challenges in our lives. It's not an, you know, Christian life sometimes, it's not so easy, especially the world that we live in now. It's not an easy thing. We need to rely on the grace of God, call upon the grace of God each and every day to lead us and guide us in the way we live our lives. Grace is not only for salvation, but for godly life. Grace is everything we need as Christians to live the life that God has called us to live. You know, we, we've already read, the, we've read this so many times where Paul says, my grace, my goodness. You forgive me, sir. I got my... I think I mixed up the, uh, my slides. Um, here Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So here again we see that God is saying, his grace is sufficient for us. And what is that grace? We'll see shortly. But God's grace is there for us. And that's why we need one another. I just, that's the message I want to, you know, no matter what I say here, I think what uh, Stephen said, we don't take grace for granted. We don't forsake the, 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 the habit of meeting because that's what, you know, I, you know, you know at the end of the, 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 the message, you know, I, I keep jumping all over. I have a song that I would like you guys to, to because it touches my heart every time because without the, without the grace of God, I don't know where I will be. And we take those things for granted. We come to church, sing, and then leave. But one thing Pastor Jennifer said about, you know, when she was preaching and she talked about those three gifts was, we need each other. We need your support. She cannot do everything. 
She says if she has to, f I mean, I, I, I don't know the exact words what she said a few weeks ago. If she has to do everything, then we're in trouble. God has given us different gifts. I hope we'll get to it. Otherwise, maybe somewhat a few months later, maybe one day a week. Um, what is, I mean, what is fellowship? Fellowship, we've talked about grace, but now I'm going to move, shift a little bit to fellowship. Fellowship is a means of grace. And it is the greatest thing God requires from his children. And what is fellowship? Fellowship is a group of people meeting to pursue a shared interest or aim. We are all here. We have a single aim. It's to praise and worship God, to receive the word of God. That is the, we are a fellowship. Fellowship is intimacy. It's closeness. So there are times that we don't want to come to church. For myself, there was one time, I'll give you a story. Um, many years ago, 1999, January 10. So you can, I, it's very exact because I have it in my diary. The diary is in the Philippines. Um, because it was, it was a big thing. I didn't want to go to church. I, it was revival church. They have a big church. You know, they have, a, it's a movie, it used to be a movie theater. I used to go to Revival Church before I moved here. And that Sunday, I didn't want to go to church. Sierra Leone was in a war. We were having war at that time. And I was just, I was not just feeling good. I didn't want to go to church. But I went anyway because, you know, I had, I had all my friends. I had Frank, you know, I had three Indian brothers. We were very, very close. We used to live together. And they all go to church. So, you know, I have to go to church. You know, after that, we go for lunch. But I was, when I went, actually, I was sitting at the back, the last row. And this is a big church. I usually sit with everybody, but I think I went, probably I went late. And then the pastor's name was, he came from Malaysia again, Charles Curtis. He called me right from the top there and says, brother, the African brother right at the back there, you come out. So I went down with he called a few other people and prophesied on me. And that prophecy, I wrote it. That's why I, I know specifically. It was a big thing. He was talking about, I don't know what I was going to say, but he was talking about leadership. I see you among leaders. And after the, that prophecy, I, so many people, a few of my friends called me, oh, Moses, we heard about this prophecy. I wrote it. I was a big skeptical. But I have seen it, how God has used that, uh, I mean, fulfill somehow part of that prophecy. I don't know where it will go, but I have had the privilege to meet our president. I've had the privilege to meet our vice president, address them specifically. And the current president of Sierra Leone was a former, is a former schoolmate. Most of the people around him are actually schoolmates. I have their contact. And some of them have actually blamed me. Why you don't come and help? I'm not a politician, and so, but I don't know, you know. But I, th that just shows that I was not willing to go to church that day. But I went anyway, and God used this brother, Brother Cortez. I've looked him up. Sometimes I look him up. Where is he? But I knew he was, in, he, was based, he was visiting, you know, and he prophesied. And so sometimes we really, Pastor Jennifer has said it a few times, we don't want to come to church, actually. We come, you're tired, and you, you know, like, I have to walk sometimes. I had to walk yesterday. You know, m most people here have to walk on Saturdays. So you don't really want to come to church. Or you feel very tired. But you come and God really touches your heart. And you forget about your tiredness. You forget about the issues that you're going through. And that's why fellowship is very, very important. And uh, before I go further, there is uh, somebody say, J.I. Parker writes, you know, uh, if, if, before I, anyways, so, sorry. If fellow, if uh, grace is so important for our Christian life, then we have to show a desire, a strong desire, to come to church to pursue grace. Because when we come to church, we will be participating, we'll be receiving, we'll be given grace when we come to church. And so, uh, J. I. Parker says. The more strongly one desires an end, the more carefully and diligently one will use the means to it. So if grace is an end and uh, 
a fellowship is a means, we have to go, we have to make sure that we diligently and carefully use fellowship because it's a means for us to get grace. And I was going to give, uh, because of time, I won't go into it, but, you know, the example of when you're pursuing something that you really want, you know, think about those of us who are married here or you're, you're courting somebody. You know, when you're pursuing your girlfriend, when you're pursuing somebody that you really love, you know, you, you make every effort. You know, Lama and I, when we were, you know, started, you know, talking to each other, I used to call her 4 o'clock. She, she used to call me her, you know, um, alarm, you know. So <laughs> I used to call her 4 o'clock. Now if I wake up 6 o'clock and she says, oh, I'm, you know, but... <laughs> That was those days, you know, four o'clock. And we'll talk for a few hours before she goes to work. And I'm sure John, John is smiling. You know, probably he has his own story. You know, uh, brother Steve. <laughs> brother Steve. <laughs> Anil has his own. Keith, you know, the Uganda one, you know, will we'll maybe get to fellowship one day and tell those stories. Um, but Christ says, my grace is sufficient for you. And so if we desire to have sufficient grace, then we, meet, we need to make every effort to fellowship. You know, there are three types of fellowships. I have just summarized um, when I was reading this. One is the fellowship with God, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then there's a fellowship with the world. Then there's a fellowship with believers. You know, sometimes we can be saved... And say we have a relationship with God, but we don't actually have fellowship with God. Those are two things. We have a relationship. I can get saved. You know, there are, there are theories. People say if you, you only get saved once. You know, somebody gets saved uh, in, a, in a conference or in, in an outreach. Uh, he believes. He confesses. He goes and continues sinning. You know, some people believe that he's already saved. He can only be saved once. But, so there is a relationship there, if you believe that. Um, but is there a fellowship? There's no fellowship. So God has called us to, to fellowship. I think I need to move on quickly. Um, so 1 John 1, 6 to 7 says, This is a message we've heard from him and de- declare to, he, to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all. And anyway, this message starts, I'm giving this message. I read this a few months ago, and I, I believe I read it once. And I was really taken aback about if we claim to have fellowship, and I do claim to have fellowship with God. I um, can say that confidently, but it says, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. I have my challenges, and so probably some of you. Sorry if you don't have, you know, um, glad if you don't have any challenges. And, and I'm, I was thinking, this for months I've been thinking about, some of the challenges that I have as a Christian, is that walking in the darkness? Maybe not. But there must be a fine line that if I continue to do certain things, I'm actually walking in the darkness. But it's, I think I don't have that knowledge enough to go into that details and explain to you guys. I think it's a personal thing that everybody needs to look at and say, am I walking in the darkness? Because if you, we claim to have fellowship and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And the truth is not in us. We have fellowship with one another. Because it says if we walk in light, we have fellowship. So if we are all walking in light, hopefully, you know, in spite of our challenges, you know, then we are having fellowship with one another. This is one of my favorite. Martha sits at Jesus' feet. We all know the story. How? Uh, let's just read it quickly. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. 
But Martha was distracted by all the Here, Jesus is telling Martha that, look, don't you care? I mean, Martha is telling uh, Jesus that, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work for, by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord says, Martha, you worry about so many things, and there's only one thing that is necessary. And that's what Hong Kong is. You know, you know sometimes I look at life, I said, you know, am I chasing the wind? You know, you, you, you're fighting to provide for your family. You're fighting to, to do things. Uh, you're fighting to do this and do that. But what is really, um, uh, let me see what uh, the right word here. You, we are worried about and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And that is a good thing that, you know, in spite of the difficulties that we go through and we are going up and down to get stuff, you know, uh, become well off or financially, I'm not saying it's not necessary. It is indeed necessary. But at the end of the day, without Christ, we are empty. And uh, Colossians 2.10 says, in Christ you have been brought to fullness. So let's go out and get all these riches and do get ourselves busy. And if I have to confess to you, there are times I get so busy, I hardly have time for, to read my, the word of God. It's either early in the morning, maybe a few minutes, or in the train, or during lunch time. I, come home, I leave very early in the morning, come back home, I'm so tired, and I sit on the computer the whole day reading documents here and there. He, boring stuff. So when I come home, the last thing I want to do is read. I have to be frank with you. Sometimes the last thing I want to do is, you know, especially when I'm, I'm getting older. I used to read a lot. Now I'm getting older. It's not that easy. But so, so those are the challenges that we, we, we face, that there's only one thing that is really, really essential. You know, the other things that we do, we should continue doing. We should spend, we should find time no matter how busy we are, to have a quiet time with the Lord. And sometimes, if we, if, you know, there, there are certain jobs that we do, we have to provide for us, for our family. There is a sister, a very faithful sister. She has to work on Sundays. Sometimes she's so pain about it. She says, but Moses, I have to provide for my family. It says, I want to go to church. And sometimes she goes to church early in the morning, and she's there in rush once in a while. But she, because of the industry that she is in, she cannot have Sunday off. They need her on Sunday. But she is making every effort to go to church. And so let's continue what we are doing, but let's know that meeting is where the grace of God is. And it doesn't only depend on us. People, it's not only what, uh, what we get, but what we also give. I hope we will have time to look at it. I'll just I'll go through a few verses quickly because uh, we're running out of time. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We are doing that. Penina was leading us. But the question is, are we singing it with gratitude in our hearts in spite of the difficulties that we're going through? Is a, is a message of Christ richly dwelling among us. Are we, you know, it says the message, uh, let me read it properly. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. So it has to be, the, 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 the word of God has to be among us. We have to be able to share uh, the word of God. 
they devoted, uh, Acts 2, 42 uh, to 44 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And when I see this, do you see some awe, some wonders and signs? It may not be that big when we had our fellowship, when we had our baptism. I was really encouraged by the testimonies, by the, the presence of God during uh, our baptism. Because, God, you know, Pastor Jennifer had preached the word of God and people got convicted. Up to the last minute, we thought there were not going to be many people. But because we devoted ourselves to it, we devoted, the time was devoted to teaching and to fellowship, we saw lives transform. There was a, you know, mom, Mama, I think, she made a decision right there and then she wanted to get baptized. And that's the grace of God working when we fellowship with one another. And let us consider how we may spur one another unto what love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I mean, this speaks for itself. Uh, we don't want to blame anybody or we don't want to, you know, um, you know uh, point fingers. But it says we should not give up meeting together, you know. Do you have the habit of saying, oh, this Sunday I go, next Sunday it doesn't matter. You know, if I'm there, this, the church will still go on. You know, you, we don't do that with our jobs, you know. Sometimes we don't want to go out on, on Mondays. You know, sometimes I think, ah, oh, I have to go to work again. Tuesday, I have to go every day. But I still go. You know, why do we, you know, with, with, with fellowship, uh, we are a little bit, um, maybe sometimes, some of us might be, uh, we, we're a little bit, we take it differently. But the word of God is saying here, we have to meet and let's discourage the habit of not meeting. I'm just going to go through, because of time, I'm going to go through a few slides, um, uh, verses. Hebrews 3, 12, 13. See to his brothers and sisters that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as, you, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Well, wow, there's so much we can unpack here. Um, First, it says about, you know, a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away. And obviously, that is it. You know, if I don't believe, most, I mean, 100%, I believe here, believe that's why we're here. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. But those who don't believe, you know, the moment you start to have some unbelief in yourself and th still thinking, oh, do I really believe this thing? Is it not wasting time? You just give up and you stop coming to church. And then it says, as it is today so that none of you may be hardened by sins. There's a reason why it says today. I think the reason is because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So today, is, if something is going on, you need to encourage a brother, do it today. Don't wait tomorrow because tomorrow will never come. You know, tomorrow will be today. When, when we have tomorrow, it will be today. So to, tomorrow will never come. So let's encourage one another as, it is, as long as it is called today. Let me know where I am. Anyway, uh, please bear with me. I'm, I think I'm a bit mixed up with my slides. Um, this is uh, this slide, uh, this is First Corinthians 12. Verse 12 to 19. This is talking about the, the many, the, the parts of the body. That we are, uh, that the fellowship is the body of Christ. And there is a comparison here that is being made. It says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. Now it says here, because, I mean, I, I'm just going to jump. Anyway, I will read the other one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, 
whether Jews or uh, Gentiles, whether Filipino, African, British, slave or free, and we are all given this one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the fool should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And, the, you know, the other thing that I thought about was, you know, what Stephen, uh, Chris, and others do, if I were to lead worship here, I can. I mean, I would have done it when I was in China. We we'll sing Chinese songs, can you imagine? Uh, but my vo- I, I'm not a good singer. You can see sometimes, even when I'm leading, I'm just so scared about singing. But it, won't, it wouldn't sound good. And it's, you know, the worship is so beautiful. We'll still be able to praise God because there are places that they don't have this instrument. They still praise God. But we have it. And if these guys are not here, who is going to play it? We'll just be there occupying space. But because they're here, the, the, the ushers, the, the IT guys there, it's all part of the body. And this morning, the other uh, analogy I thought about, suppose you were coming here to the kid, uh, your, your friend told you and said, Mr. Moody, you know, I want to stay home or I want to go play football. Mr. F- you know, the, food, the hand says, sorry, I'm not coming today with you. The eye says, I want to go see Ferrari, you know, Tobias and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and Jeremy. You know, how you will come here handicapped. But that's, that's the illustration, you know, I thought about that Christ is trying to give us, that we are a body. You know, sometimes you feel like you are the most, you, you are insignificant, you are nothing. If I can stand here and talk to you guys, any of you can do that and even do better. Because God can use all of us. It doesn't matter the level of our education. Look at the sisters in the Philippines. You know, who were there, and some of you might be timid. If I give you this, this uh, microphone to speak, you will start being timid. And some of them probably were like that. And probably, I, I mean, I, I was definitely like that. But look at what they are doing now in the Philippines. And look at the good report that we've had. It's so encouraging. I want to continue encouraging you. Um, I'm almost there. God's grace, I'm just going to summarize. God's grace through the fellowship of believers is centered on God's love. These are just nine points. I could easily have written 20, you know, how many points. Um, But I said this is enough. But God's grace through the fellowship of believers is centered on God's love. That's number one. Consistently pointing on on, on believers and believers to Christ. That's what... The church does. We, we encourage one another, and when we have an opportunity, we invite, you know, unbelievers. Just like Julia did, inviting our friends. Sometimes we see some of the youth, so some of us invite our friends to come. That's what the grace of God and the fellowship that we are participating in, uh, we do. The sharing of, you know, we do share the word of God, obviously. We share our hearts and burdens with one another, including physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Think about those with, you know, Sister Fansha is not here today. Sorry. (laughs) I didn't see you. Uh, Eileen and, you know, our other sisters, Claire, you know, they, they, you know, we also, uh, you know, when my dad was uh, in 2018, he died in 2020, in 2018, end of 2018, when he was, I got one, mes- one time I got a message that, oh, situa- your daddy's situation is getting very sick, you know, and I was trying to uh, buy a ticket and go, you know, um, but then I was having difficulties. I had to attend a board meeting, and uh, that just extended my stay, but I, I shared, I did share with Lighthouse, and you guys prayed for for my dad, and I told him, my dad was a, was a, was a strong believer. Let's just put it that way. Very, very strong believer. And he was so, so encouraged that Hong Kong, thousands and thousands of miles away, are praying for him. He was so encouraged. I'm not joking. You know, 
And he, he lived for another one and a half year to two years before he finally passed away. And, you know, the other, you know, Josh is here, and I, I thought I will, I will uh, you know, say this quickly. When he was in, the, in, the, in, in, in um, COVID time, when he got stuck in, in uh, uh, Japan, you know, I told you guys this story before. I was with him on the phone till 3 o'clock. He was the only one at the airport apart from the, uh, from the security guards. I told him to write a book about his experience. Maybe there's only a few people in the world who have had that sort of experience alone in a, in, a, in a big place. So I was so scared. And all our plans was he sat there with his computer going back to the U.S. Go, go. I mean, what he was going to do was he, he was there and then. He, he registered for certain subjects. That was not a plan. But some of you here were praying for him to come here. And it did happen. Because the, the, the miracle was, at that time, it was so difficult. You need to get the, P, the PCR test or whatever test you have to do. And you have to get a hotel. It was really, really difficult. But when I was able to get, and, and the other thing was the ticket as well. To, come, to, to just, you know, make sure that they all aligned was so difficult. But it just went in smoothly. We were not praying. All we were praying for, get him out of there, go to Korea, Philippines, anywhere, and go back to the U.S. But he ended up coming here and spending time the summer with us. And we praise God because you guys were praying. And we were not praying for that. I have to be honest with you. Sharing generously with one another and with those in need. We do that in in Lighthouse, we, you know, uh, uh, serving the, the body of Christ with our gifts and talents. And that's one, one area that we need to encourage people more, you know. If our brothers and sisters are spending time to uh, do the music, the ushering, their needs, the Sunday school, we need people to be able to, you know, to volunteer and say, I want to do that. Or sometimes just, you know, um, maybe talk to the elders in the, in the church and say, what can I do? You know, or if they don't, if you, if, if, you, if you cannot volunteer, if somebody approaches you, be willing to say yes. I can say, you know, uh, you know Priscilla is there. She asked me for, uh, to be the MC in the wedding. And I, the first thing I told, I told her that I, my Chinese is not good. On the phone, she says, oh, don't worry, we have a translator. I said, okay, if that's what... If you think I can do it, okay, fine, you know. But I was really, you know, thinking, I don't want to mess up this wedding, you know. But through the grace of God, I was able to, you know, do whatever I was able to do. Watching out for each other. Let's continue to call our brothers and sisters. If you don't see a brother who has been or a sister who hasn't been here, uh, let's try to make connection. We can't make connection with everybody. That's for sure. But make connection with one or two people. You know, when somebody, when you see somebody new, let's try to, you know, uh, make that connection. Uh, preserving, uh, persevering together in the faith, representing the love of Christ as one body. Well, that's basically my message. I'm going to play now. I'm going to ask the IT guys to, uh, to play this. I can listen to this song 100 times the whole day. I'm not joking. I can listen. They, my family knows me. I can listen over and over and over and over. The reason is, I want you to, I'm encouraging you guys to look at it, brothers and sisters, when, before you were saved, when you got saved, the grace of God, and how is the grace of God leading you and guiding you in your walk, in your daily walk? Because we all do struggle. To be frank, sometimes I just feel I'm inadequate. But the grace of God is
an empty place if not for grace where would I be you only know I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case and empty place if not for grace amazing grace how sweet the sound I once was loved But now I'm found A hopeless case An empty place If not for grace Precious Lord Take my hand And lead me Where would I be? You only know I'm glad you see, Lord Through eyes of love A hopeless case An empty bliss If not for grace I'm a hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace, we're a hopeless case, an empty place, thank God for grace. Where would you be if it was not for grace? May God bless you, and thank you for your wonderful time. So thank you, Brother Moses, for bringing the word of the Lord. As he was, uh, you know, speaking... I realized that he has he has a similar background as me. We were growing up in a country under war, and uh, without the grace of God, I don't know where I am today. Uh, so, this is the great, amazing grace of God through His love. And uh, as on the horizontal basis. If you don't have grace toward each other, me and me, we would have a blue eye. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we need to be graceful to each other. Yes, and uh, so be uh, as we, uh, you know, the service finished. You may meet each other to have lunch together. So have a good fellowship and be an encouragement to each other. Because me, I've been encouraged by those who are in the likeness of, of God in some, or of Jesus in, in some aspect of their life. So use them as our example to, to perfect ourselves because we are here to transform ourselves. And uh, for the week to come, uh, be, the Lord, uh, be the Lord continue to, be, uh, to bless you and uh, to keep you, to protect you, and to, uh, <coughs> and to uh, give you peace. Um, body, as we are body, so. 
just with Jesus' body, so I, I address to you as a body of Christ. Amen. Amen.